An ultra process. Ultra process. An ultra process. Ultra process. Ultra process. Ultra process. Ultra processed food. Ultra processed. Are ultra processed foods the new tobacco? Let's get into it. So what is an ultra processed food? There's unprocessed food, then there's processed food, and then there's ultra processed food. The term ultra processed food actually comes from a food classification system called the NOVA classification system. And what that system does is it changes our perspective on food. Traditionally, we categorize food into food groups. But with NOVA, instead of looking at what kind of food it is, it looks at how the food was made. And it has four basic food categories. You've got your unprocessed or minimally processed foods, starting with whole food, which is basically food in its original form, unprocessed, like an apple. And then you have minimally processed foods, which are natural foods that have had some type of processing. And even something as basic as cleaning or cutting or cooling or freezing the food makes it processed. For example, slicing a tomato means that you have processed that tomato. Canning or cooking or drying something out, any of that is minimal processing. What if I told you that rolled oats are processed? But this is a good processing because to make them flat, you have to roll them and that is a processed product. Then you have processed culinary ingredients. So those are ingredients like butter, oil, or salt, for example, that are extracted from natural foods and then are used in cooking. Then you have processed foods. These are basically unprocessed or those minimally processed foods that have been altered by adding one of those processed ingredients like butter, oil, or salt. And typically these foods will have just two or three ingredients. So what most people don't realize is that a lot of the foods that we consider to be quite healthy are technically processed foods. Frozen fruit, processed. Cooked shrimp and wild caught salmon, processed. Organic baby spinach, processed. 93% lean ground beef, processed. Broccoli, processed. Almond butter where the only ingredient is almonds, processed. Anyone that tells you to completely cut out processed foods, red flag. Processed does not mean unhealthy. But then you have the last category, which is ultra-processed foods. The least healthy category of foods are what are called ultra-processed foods. Yes. When we say ultra-processed foods, we're really talking about foods where you start with the natural food, and then you go through multiple industrial processes that chemically modify that food. They add preservatives to inhibit mold and bacteria so it lasts on the shelf longer. They add emulsifiers to keep incompatible ingredients together and you have flavors, anti-foaming agents, bulking, bleaching, gelling, and glazing agents, non-sugar sweeteners, and all sorts of other additives that basically make the food taste better and look better. And of course, that includes dyes and colors. And how do you think these loops get that color there? With beets, with natural food products? No, it's with red number 40, yellow number five, and other colorings called artificial coloring that are derived from petroleum. By the time they're done with the processing, there is often very little of the original food left. A good rule of thumb is that if it's ready to eat and it's from a package, it's probably an ultra-processed food. If you can't make it in your home kitchen because you need industrial machinery and obscure chemicals, it's probably an ultra-processed food. We're talking about baked goods, soft drinks, candies, sugary cereals, packaged snacks like chips, instant noodles, deli meats, canned soup, the list goes on and on. So what do these foods do to your body? Well, we now have over 1,500 observational studies that have looked at the various health effects of ultra-processed foods, and their findings are remarkably consistent. They show that eating these ultra-processed foods is linked to all sorts of detrimental health effects, including just dying. In February of this year, this massive study was published. It's what's called an umbrella review, which basically brings together multiple prior reviews, which in turn bring together multiple individual studies. So by doing this review of reviews, they brought together data from almost 10 million people. And they found 32 different damaging health outcomes from consuming ultra-processed foods. That went from cancer, to mental health, to respiratory, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, and metabolic disorders. The strongest evidence was that greater ultra-processed food consumption will increase your chance of dying from cardiovascular disease by about 50%. Anxiety and other mental health outcomes also increased by about 50%, and diabetes was up by 12%. There were increases in depression, poor sleep, wheezing. There was a 55% higher chance of obesity. Hi folks, do we really know what we're eating? I don't think it's any coincidence that we're getting 
fatter and fatter as a nation and our food is getting more and more full of ultra processed foods, ultra processed ingredients. When you put it all together, there was a 20% increased chance of dying in this study in people who consumed more ultra processed foods. And there aren't a lot of things you can do to your body that cause that much damage. The one that comes to mind, of course, is this one. Even more recently, there was a massive study of over 540,000 people presented at the 2024 American Society for Nutrition Conference. They asked these people about their consumption of 124 different foods, and then they followed them out for an average of 23 years to see what happened to them. And what they found was that people who consumed the most ultra-processed foods compared to people who consumed the least had about a 10% higher overall risk of dying. And those deaths were most strongly associated with diabetes and heart disease. The three most commonly consumed ultra-processed foods in that high-risk group were diet soft drinks, sugary soft drinks, and refined grains like breads and baked goods. And we know from other studies that diet beverages are particularly dangerous. They increase the risk of early death from cardiovascular disease, they're associated with dementia, type 2 diabetes, obesity, stroke, and metabolic syndrome. And sugary drinks are no better. They've also been linked to premature death and multiple different chronic diseases. The other food that has often been found to drive that association with death in these studies is processed meat. We're talking about bacon, hot dogs, sausages, ham, salami, jerky, and even those innocent looking chicken nuggets. These processed meats are associated with bowel and stomach cancers, heart disease, diabetes, and early death from any cause. Now, one of the challenges is that we don't actually know why these foods are so harmful. One theory is that this might have to do with changes to what's called the gut microbiome, which is all the microorganisms that live in our gut and impact various different aspects of our health. In fact, we've talked about this on this channel before. But it also has to do with the energy density in these foods and their nutrient composition, in addition to their physical and chemical properties. It's also about the additives. So a lot of individual additives in these foods have been studied and shown to be associated with cancer and other negative health outcomes. The concern here is that putting them all together in a single food might actually amplify their effects. Now the knock on the studies showing these harms is that they're all observational studies, which means they're subject to the possibility of bias. And that's why the best kind of study is a randomized controlled trial. Of course, making people eat a specific diet, particularly an unhealthy diet, just for the purposes of research, is not an easy thing to do. But it has been done. So this is the only randomized controlled trial of ultra-processed food consumption. They brought 20 healthy volunteers into the lab and had them basically live there for four weeks. And they gave them all their meals and snacks. And they randomly assigned them to either an 80% ultra-processed food diet or an unprocessed food diet for two straight weeks. And then they swapped them to the other diet. And the meals were designed to be matched for total calories, carbs, fat, protein, even things like fiber, sugar, and sodium. And they basically told the subjects to eat as little or as much as they wanted to, as they would normally eat until they were full. And what they found was that when they were on the ultra-processed diet, people ate about 500 calories more per day than when they were on the minimally processed diet. And that translated into a two pound weight gain during the two weeks that they ate the ultra-processed foods and a two pound weight loss during the two weeks that they ate the minimally processed foods. So what this showed is that there's something about these ultra-processed foods that makes people want to eat more of them without necessarily even wanting to or realizing it. And that gives rise to this idea that these foods may be addictive. And when you combine all those different health effects on top of the idea that they're addictive, you get to this movement where ultra-processed foods are being called the new tobacco. And we know that refined carbs, added fats, and very sweet or very salty foods, which are the exact ingredients in ultra-processed foods, all have a high addictive potential. In fact, refined carbs and fat trigger similar levels of dopamine release in the brain as nicotine and alcohol. And remember, drugs that reach the brain faster are more addictive. And these foods deliver carbs and fats to the gut much faster because the natural chemical and physical composition of food, which normally takes time to digest and absorb, is completely gone. So they get digested faster and absorbed faster and they hit the brain faster. Not to mention the effect of things like additives and flavors in these foods, which are similar to things like flavored menthol cigarettes and all of those flavors we see in e-cigarettes now. Guys, when I was young, they warned us about alcohol, tobacco, 
recreational drugs like ecstasy and how bad they were for us. It scared me. We stopped taking those drugs, or at least we used up, we were aware of the dangers. But why are they not warning us about shit like this? And if you think about it, ultra-processed food companies are these massive multinational corporations that produce attractive and addictive products, they use aggressive marketing strategies, including marketing to children, and they lobby against regulation. Sounds a lot like big tobacco. So what can we do to reduce our ultra-processed food consumption? Well, first let's acknowledge that it's not going to be easy. Ultra-processed foods make up more than half of the calories that Americans consume. Actually, studies estimate that close to 60% of the average American's daily calories come from ultra-processed foods. In children, it's close to 70%, and that number increases every year. In fact, 71% of all available grocery items are ultra-processed foods. They're everywhere. We all eat them. So the first point is just education. Public health campaigns so people can understand the dangers of ultra-processed foods, just like we've done with tobacco. But we also need various levels of government regulation, and this may be coming in the US. We need governments to more tightly control those addictive additives in these foods. We could also limit ads for ultra-processed foods, especially ads targeting kids. Some countries are doing this. We can add warning labels to the food packaging, again, just like we do with cigarette packs. Latin American countries already have front-of-pack warning labels on ultra-processed foods. And a lot of countries also place taxes on the most dangerous ultra-processed foods like sweetened beverages. Some countries outright ban ultra-processed foods in schools. We can also regulate grocery stores to better separate ultra-processed foods from other foods so we know what's what. And the other problem is that a whole food diet is at least one and a half times more expensive than an ultra-processed diet. So we need better ways to bridge those price gaps and help people to afford more nutritious foods. While all this is being worked out, at the end of the day, you control what goes into your body. So eat more whole foods, like fruits and veggies. If you can, cook more at home. Take a look at those food labels. The more ingredients you can't pronounce, the more processed the food is. If you're not sure, use an online tool like TrueFood. And you can be selective. Not all ultra-processed foods are made equal. Maybe you focus on cutting out the highest risk categories like diet pop, sugary beverages, processed meats, as opposed to, for example, whole wheat or yogurt. Again, those are ultra-processed, but they do have beneficial nutrients like fibers, vitamins, and minerals. Ultimately, you probably won't be able to eliminate these foods completely, but you can cut down. And remember, it's your overall diet that matters. It's not about a single meal or an occasional indulgence. So understand the risks and find the balance that's right for you. If you have ideas on how to do this, please share them with us below. And if you like the content, subscribe to the feed.